Sleep paralysis is one of the most frightening experiences a person can have. It's hard to compare but if I had to do it, just imagine that you are in direct contact with a herd of lions and you know that you are about to be eaten alive. Imagine going through it almost every night for years and years every time it's just as intense as the first time, and there's nothing you can do about it. Sleep paralysis can last for years and seems like a hopeless case. You are exhausted and you are afraid to even fall asleep. It seems that sleep paralysis manifests itself depending on personal opinions or beliefs. During sleep paralysis, the crisp dreams of REM spill over into waking consciousness like a dream coming alive before your eyes, fanged figures and all. These hallucinations, often involving seeing and sensing ghostly bedroom intruders, are interpreted differently around the world. People see the devil, the ghost and the old hag. They may see also aliens. Over the centuries, symptoms of sleep paralysis have been described in many ways and often attributed to an evil presence, unseen night demons in ancient times, the old hag in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, and alien abductors. Almost every culture throughout history has had stories of shadowy evil creatures that terrify helpless humans at night. People have long sought explanations for this mysterious sleep time paralysis and the accompanying feelings of terror. They may see also aliens. Over the centuries, symptoms of sleep paralysis have been described in many ways and often attributed to an evil presence, unseen night demons in ancient times, the old hag in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, and alien abductors. Evidence suggests that sleep paralysis is caused by an overlap of REM sleep and wakefulness. The hallucinations accompanying the sleep paralysis are identical to hypnagogic hallucinations and are probably a consequence of dream imagery occurring during wakefulness. This is one theory on why the hallucinations co-occur with SP, this theory is standing on a platform of evidence and has reasoning behind its science. Sleep paralysis is a haunting sleep disorder that can affect many people, and is caused by a simple overlap of waking up and rapid eye movement. There are different folklore explanations about this in every part of the world, and it basically concerns the spiritual realm. I have been a victim of this phenomenon for many years with varying degrees of intensity. The first time was shocking because it was unexpected. I lay down late and slept on my back and around three in the middle of the night I opened my eyes and saw my room. I could move my eyes left and right, but my neck was still. I was scared and couldn't move. After a while I started to feel some pressure on my chest and I was sure that some invisible being was pressing on me with invisible hands. I wanted to scream but I could only make some soft sounds that did not wake anyone up. At first I might have kept my eyes open when it repeated, but after a while it happened during sleep and my eyes were closed during repetitive episodes. I changed the positions I fell asleep to, but it didn't help. I have always felt hands on me and pressure as if it would be hard for someone not to crush me into bed. Sometimes I felt someone sitting on it and jumping up and down, pressing me into the mattress of the bed. After a while I started having these dreams. Sleep started normally, no big deal. A dream like a dream, of no great importance and always from normal sleep within a second, turned into a nightmare and the feeling of this invisible being on me forcing me into bed. I remember the first dream. I saw the shadow of a hunched old woman on the wall of my house approaching my window just before the sleepy paralysis, and I was convinced that she was the invisible torturer. I tried to pray but it didn't help. I tried to fight it too, but I couldn't win and I actually felt a terrible feeling around my spine which intensified when I put up resistance. Each time I was aware of what was happening around me but I couldn't get out of this nightmare. Once I fell asleep before midday and heard my family talking and commenting on my behavior during sleep, but I was paralyzed and pleaded in my thoughts to help. It was enough for someone to touch me and I immediately woke up. If you can call it a dream, if you are conscious but you cannot move. I have noticed that sometimes my sleep paralyzes more often and sometimes it happens with different breaks. Sometimes a few days, sometimes a few weeks off. I talked to people and read about this phenomenon but different sources give different causes and no positive advice on how to cure it. My friend confided in me that he had it too, and then I began to associate the facts. I combined my experiences and those of others and came to the conclusion that the main concern was worry. Too much stress for a long time that you have not resolved leads to sleep paralysis. Personal troubles, stress at work, financial troubles, etc. Do not lead to this state by itself, but worrying all the time does. 
when I had positive days, I didn't have these nightmares, but when worrying about everything intensified, I could be sure that the nightmare would come back. Stop worrying is easier said than done. You need to distance yourself from life and take nothing personally to start healing. Try to learn the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Now, when I try to distance myself from the pros of life, I have these nightmares very rarely and if I already have them, they are not so intense and you can live with it. Who develops sleep paralysis? Lack of sleep. Sleep schedule that changes. Mental conditions such as stress or bipolar disorder. Sleeping on the back. Other sleep problems such as narcolepsy or nighttime leg cramps. Use of certain medications, such as those for ADHD. Substance abuse. How is sleep paralysis treated? Most people need no treatment for sleep paralysis. Treating any underlying conditions such as narcolepsy may help if you are anxious or unable to sleep well. These treatments may include the following. Improving sleep habits, such as making sure you get 6 to 8 hours of sleep each night. Using antidepressant medication if it is prescribed to help regulate sleep cycles. Treating any mental health problems that may contribute to sleep paralysis. Treating any other sleep disorders, such as narcolepsy or leg cramps. Be sure to see your doctor if sleep paralysis routinely prevents you from getting a good night's sleep. And remember, don't worry too much.